Paul. Does your heart melt when you hear that Rishi Sunak is sad and disappointed? My heart never melts when I see Rishi Sunak on, the, on the television, I have to say. Doesn't um, he look so sweet standing there in the soup kitchen or wherever well, he is? Look, looks can be deceptive because he may look sweet on the surface, but underneath, um, I think the actions that his government are taking, or the lack of action, I should say, that his government are taking in relation to these strikes are causing a lot of misery, a lot of What should he be hardship. doing? I think, as government, you need to intervene. We've got to a point, I think, in these strikes where... Um, when, when it has such an impact on the country and the ability of the country to function, you know, whether it's the health service, whether it's the transport system, whether it's the emergency services and so on, I think any government needs to get a grip of the situation and say, actually, if we need to intervene in order to make sure there's more money on the table for some of these essential workers to have a decent pay increase and so that they don't experience uh, some of the problems that are being, you know, as a result of the cost of living mm. crisis... Um, people struggling to pay their mortgages, their energy bills, worrying about if they can afford Christmas presents for their children and, and so on. The government has got the, the wherewithal to intervene in that way if it chooses to do so, but it's chosen not to do so. And in my view, this anger is not going mm. to go, uh, go away. The anger that led to these strikes mm. isn't going to dissipate anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, but we haven't exactly known Rishi Sunak for his fiscal restraint over the course of the mm. pandemic. He's now desperately trying to convince the public that he can handle the public finances, get inflation under control. David, where's the balance here? Well, I mean, that's the point, isn't it? I mean, much of the problem is Rishi Sunak's fault because he was so fiscally irresponsible over the two years of the lockdown period. Billions and billions going into contracts and we don't know where the mm. uh, things bought in the contracts. Well, this keeps the reoccurring, this, the gone. contracts. Yeah, huge waste of money. He borrowed £400 billion plus. Now, that's, in, you know, that's baking in 10, 20, 25% to inflation. We got inflation this year of 10%. Now, normally, I would be, you know, I'd be on the right of politics, I would immediately and uh, automatically knee-jerkingly say, no, nope, the unions are wrong, the strikes are wrong. But actually, in this case, I can see the <clears> point. <throat> because Rishi Sunak uh, has messed up so much with the economy, because we've got 10% inflation now, if you give workers a pay rise of less than 10% when there's 10% inflation, they have a real terms pay cut. Well, it's and the true. MPs are getting a pay rise, uh, the pensioners have got a pay rise, yeah. uh, welfare people have got a pay rise. He's spending loads of money, splashing out money to Ukraine on migrant hotels, on diversity officers, on foreign aid. But people are saying, well, what about the workers in this country? But I do worry what about the, the other workers, mm. um, you know, those working in the private sector who aren't getting inflation busting well, pay rises necessarily I'd say, I mean, just, just quickly, he's only responsible really for negotiating for um, workers who are employed in the public no, sector. No, I know, but so. they have to, the other workers have to pay for it all, do they not? Well, I, I, I think, no, I don't think We're being taxed more and no, more no, and I, more. I don't think necessarily they do. I think there's huge scope, for example, for, for a wealth tax, which could bring in billions of pounds on the, from the richest people within society, progressive taxation. What do we do next year? You know, you tax wealth... Well, hopefully it's smaller next year, there's less wealth to tax. Well, hopefully inflation won't be next year what it is this year. Mm. But let's, let's be blunt, Emily, the, the, the super-rich have always put up arguments against being taxed more. They always uh, claim that they'll take their, their funds and their wealth abroad. Um, and for me, that's holding the country to ransom in a way that union members are often accused of holding the country to ransom. So, you know, it's funny, isn't it, how we can find billions of pounds at the drop of a hat during lockdown, for example, to, for, for furlough schemes. We can uh, find billions of pounds to, to go to war for, a, you know, the next military escapade whenever we need it. Um, we can find billions of pounds when it's needed. But when it comes to a crucial situation Well, we can't like this, always have a wartime, emergency time spending. That's just well, ludicrous. I, I mean, Tony Benn always used to say, why is it that we can, you know, he, he was a serviceman in the Second World War. He always used to say, how was it we could find millions of millions millions of pounds um, to employ young men to put on a uniform to go and kill Germans, but we can't find it when we need people to build hospitals, when we need nurses, when we need to give people a decent pay increase, when we need people to build the roads and the schools and so on. So I think it's about priorities. I think it's about saying, well, if you can do those things when you need to, why is it you can't do it in order to be able to, to fund a decent pay increase?